Uli Steck was born on 4 October 1976 in Langnau, Emmental, Switzerland, and began his career as a carpenter. At the age of 12, he joined the Swiss Alpine Club, which fueled his passion for nature and rock climbing. From a young age, he was drawn to the mountains and the thrill of climbing them. At the age of 12, he started to take mountaineering seriously and spent every free moment practicing and learning the ropes. His dedication paid off, and by the time he turned 16, he had become an accomplished mountaineer, able to keep up with even the most experienced professionals on the mountain. Due to his climbing achievements, Uli Steck is considered one of the world's greatest mountaineers. He was also known as the Swiss Machine. He was just 18 years old when he made his first ascent up the north face of the Eiger in 1994. This was only the beginning of his climbing adventures. Later that same year, he tackled the intimidating Bonatti Pillar located in the Alps and successfully reached the summit. This was a major accomplishment for the young climber and marked the start of many more successful ascents to come. Uli Steck's reputation as a mountaineer continued to soar after his early alpine ascents. In 2004, he made headlines by once again climbing the Eiger, but this time, he did it in just 25 hours. This feat solidified his place within the mountaineering community and garnered the respect and admiration of climbers around the world. From then on, Uli Steck was known as a climbing legend, setting the bar high for other climbers to follow. After establishing himself as a top mountaineer in the Alps, Uli Steck turned his attention to the Himalayas and its many challenging peaks. In 2005, he achieved two major milestones in his climbing career. He completed the first solo ascent of the north face of Chalats, a feat that had never been done before, and he also made a successful ascent of the east face of Tawush. His remarkable climbing achievements did not go unnoticed. In 2007, Climb Magazine named him one of the top three mountaineers in Europe, an honor that was well-deserved. This recognition was a testament to the many incredible feats Uli Steck had accomplished in his climbing career up to that point. Steck returned to the north face of the Eiger, and when he put his mind to it, he set a new world record for the fastest ascent of the peak, completing the climb in a mind-blowing 3 hours and 54 minutes. This incredible feat was a testament to Uli Steck's skill and determination, and it was a moment that would be remembered in the archives of mountaineering history. After setting the world record on the Eiger in 2007, Uli Steck's attention returned to the Himalayas, where he had previously made a name for himself. That year, he set his sights on a solo ascent of an extremely difficult, unfinished route on the south face of the Annapurna. However, Steck's climb was complicated when he was badly injured by a rockfall. The injury was so severe that he had to abandon his hopes of reaching the summit to recover. Although the injury was a setback, Uli Steck was undaunted and remained determined to reach the summit the following season. The following year, Uli Steck once again set his sights on the Eiger and shattered his own record for the fastest ascent of the North Face, completing the climb in an incredible 2 hours and 47 minutes. However, his planned solo ascent of Annapurna was not to be. As Steck began his ascent, he began to have reservations about the risk of avalanches and ultimately decided to call off his summit bid. Despite this disappointment, Steck's love for the mountains and his commitment to the climbing community remained strong. He soon found himself volunteering to assist in the rescue of a group of Spanish climbers who had fallen into trouble. Steck's selflessness and bravery in the face of danger were a testament to the kind of person he was and to his unwavering commitment to the climbing community. In 2013, he made his third attempt on the deadly route of Annapurna, and after years of preparation and hard work, he finally managed to reach the summit. Uli Steck completed the climb in a whopping 28 hours, which elapsed from the time he left base camp to the time he returned to base camp. This incredible feat was widely regarded as one of the most impressive in the history of mountaineering and confirmed Uli Steck's place as one of the greatest climbers of all time. After the climb, Nicole, Steck's wife, urged him to reduce the number of solo ascents, and in return, Steck promised to limit his future solo climbing attempts. In 2009 and 2014, he received the prestigious Piolet Dior Award, one of the most prestigious awards in mountaineering. Known for his speed, he broke the fastest ascent record of the Eiger three times. In addition, the Swiss machine has also achieved other remarkable feats, such as climbing the south face of the Annapurna solo, climbing Everest without oxygen, and completing all 82 alpine peaks above 4,000 meters in just 62 days. After a period of rest and reflection, he was eager to return to the mountains and test his limits again. 
In 2015, he set his sights on the Alps and a new challenge, to climb all 82 peaks over 4,000 meters in the range of just 62 days, and without the aid of motorized transport. This was an unprecedented achievement, one that few climbers had attempted, let alone accomplished. Later that year, he broke his record for the fastest ascent of the Eiger's North Face, completing it in just 2 hours and 22 minutes. In 2016, Steck and his climbing partner David Gottler embarked on a new adventure, determined to conquer the summit of Shisha Pengma. Their goal was to make a ski descent, a feat few had attempted before. As they ascended the mountain, they encountered challenges and obstacles everywhere, but their courage and determination were great. They kept going, determined to reach the top. As they descended the mountain, they came across something that would change their lives forever. They stumbled upon the body of renowned mountaineer Alex Lowe. Steck and David were shocked and saddened by the sight. Alex had been a hero to many in the climbing community, and his death was a great loss. They paused to pay their respects and to reflect on the dangers and uncertainties of their chosen path. After this, Steck would again return to the Himalayas for an even more challenging and pioneering ascent. This time, he planned an ascent of Mount Everest without the use of supplementary oxygen. Steck and Tenji, his 26-year-old climbing partner, traversed the ridge to Lhotse and established a base camp. They then started the acclimatization process, which is crucial for climbers trying to summit alpine style, where they only carry the necessary equipment and aim to reach the summit and return to base camp quickly. Even though his climbing partner was disabled by his injuries, Steck continued his acclimatization process, and on the evening of 29 April 2017 at 5 p.m., he reached their location for Camp 2 and began to settle in for the night. He then sent Tenji Sherpa a text message. The text message stated that Steck intended to summit a nearby smaller peak Noopsi as an acclimatization exercise. The following day, Tenji immediately responded to the text message, replying by asking, are you going to climb alone or with friends? Tenji did not receive a reply from Steck that evening. The next morning, Steck was left alone for his planned ascent of the Noopsi and was spotted by a Nepalese guide at an altitude of about 23,000 feet. Shortly after seeing the figure of Steck, he heard a sound. He looked back and saw that the figure was no longer visible on the mountainside. The guide who had seen him on the mountain and another man decided to look closer for fear that he might have fallen, and at 9.34 a.m., their fears were indeed confirmed when they found Steck's lifeless body about a thousand meters below where the guide had seen him on the mountain. Upon inspecting his remains, they discovered that he was not wearing a helmet, harness, gloves, or trekking poles when he flew down the mountainside. Steck's body was then recovered by the guides in Tenji Sherpa, and then transported to Kathmandu where a large memorial service was held for him. Uli Steck only reached the age of 40. Following a traditional Buddhist funeral ceremony, including cremation by pyre at Tengboshe Monastery near Kathmandu, Uli Steck's ashes were returned to Switzerland. The ceremony took place at the foot of towering Himalayan peaks, including Everest, with monks in flowing robes offering prayers and music. Steck's wife Nicole and closest family members bid their final farewells. In early May 2017, a statement from the family spokesman expressed gratitude to Yuli Steck's fans, colleagues, and friends for their support. As a token of appreciation, the family extended an invitation to the public and media to attend a public commemoration ceremony. On May 23rd at 4 p.m., a commemoration event was held at the Congress Center Kursal Interlaken. The nearby community of Grindelwald, close to the Eiger, was also considering honoring the late climber by naming a portion of the famous mountain after him. Steck will always be remembered as a legend in mountaineering. His talent was exceptional. His achievements and incredible legacy will surely be remembered for decades to come. And his tragic end will remind all mountaineers that even the most meticulous and gifted climbers can lose their lives in seconds due to the ferocity of Mother Nature's mountains. If you have followed this story to this point, I would like to say a big thank you. If you like this kind of story, don't forget to hit the like button and comment below. If you're interested in this type of content, please click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you will be notified when another video is posted. Until next time, be cautious and don't ever lose your sense of wonder.